Hey everybody out there in YouTube land, it's Steve here. I'm making a video today due to the actions of the government. I didn't want to have to make this video on this channel. I said at the beginning I didn't want to politicize this channel whatsoever and I meant that. However, actions by the Canadian government I feel are forcing my hand in the hands of a lot of other firearms owners to take to the airwaves in protest of what's going on. Now, this all started uh, with Bill C-71, which, for those of you who know what that is, that's the new Canadian Firearms Act. Now, what C-71 does is it changes the conditions for getting a license, and it changes the uh, conditions for transport of certain classes of firearms. I won't get into those right now, but needless to say is that it does treat a lot of people very unfairly. Right now, as it stands, our firearms licensing is one of the best systems in the world. If it's actually monitored and maintained properly by the RCMP, then it's one of the one of the tightest controls around. It has some of the most tight regulations for allowing people to get firearm access to firearms that there is, period. I think there's maybe three other countries that have stiffer laws than we do in regards to getting firearms licenses. So it changes the five plate currently under the old rules, there are five places you can take your firearm that are covered by your blanket ATT, your authorization to transport for your restricted weapons. That is the range, to a gunsmith, to a gun show, to the border, or to the police station for registration or destruction. That being said, The other classifications are Prohib, which I believe are covered under the same rules as Restricted, except you can't take them to gun shows or the border. You can take them to the range and probably to, I don't think you can, I don't know if you're allowed to take them to uh, guns, I assume they're allowed to take them to gunsmiths, but that's about it. Now, for non-restricted, it's pretty much you're allowed to take your firearm to any of those places or to take it hunting without needing an ATT. But you're not allowed to just drive around with it willy-nilly with it in a, you know, the cops kind of frown on it. There's no law saying you can't have it in the car, but it's a big social faux pas, put it that way. And responsible firearms owners don't do that. And Canada has some, has some of the most responsible firearms owners that there are. I mean, I remember back when I was a kid in the 70s seeing my friends dropped off at school with their daddies had their shotguns or their Winchesters or whatever rifle slung across the back window of their pickup trucks. Did I ever feel threatened by it? No. That was normal. But that was years and years and years ago <laughs> as the gray shows you know back then we could still watch Wiley e. Coyote get an anvil in the head and none of us tried to do it because we had the common sense to know that if you did that you died so now the other thing C-71 does is Instead of five years on the background check, it takes it right back to the day you were born. So somebody who had an incident with the cops when they were a teenager could be automatically disqualified as when they're, say they wait till they're 30 years old to apply for a firearms license under the new rules that are going to come in. You committed a crime at 14. And under the new rules, that crime at 14 when you're 35 could disqualify you from getting your license or from getting a renewal on your license. It's really that simplistic and stupid. 
somebody go, does something stupid when they're a kid or a young adult, and then they go 10, 15 years down the road, keep their nose clean, and they don't do anything bad, then they're penalized for it again. Well, if they paid their debt the first time, they don't need to pay for it going forward. All that is is a measure of trying to reduce the amount of firearms licenses that are out there. That's all they want to do is they want to reduce the, the pool of licenses and that's how they're going to do it. That's how they're going to get, that's one of the, re, that's one of the ways they're going to get rid of firearms. That's one of the ways they're going to totally ban them. They'll whittle down the field of people who have the licenses and then they'll say, well, you know, there's less than 500,000 of you so we don't think we're going to issue any more licenses. Yes, it's systematic extinction of firearms licenses. Now, C-71 passed third reading, and it was voted on, and it passed with all the liberals and all the NDP and the supposed independent senators in the Senate voting in favor of it. And I say supposed because every one of them was appointed by Justin Trudeau, and every one of them is a card-carrying liberal, liberal party member. So, how independent are they, really? Not very. And then just, I think it was about a week ago, Tony Clement in Parliament questioned the government about reports he'd been receiving about a potential gun ban. Well, at first it was, you know, everybody thought, well, you know what, this may just be the government blowing smoke and mirrors trying to redirect attention because they're getting hammered heavily on Mark Norman and the SNC-Lavalin and about a half a dozen other scandals that were still in the news. They're desperate, we thought at first, maybe they're desperate to change the channel. So they'll go with the gun ban story. And they'll try leaking that. But then, as the days went on, we start hearing more and more about it from other sources, and it's starting to look more and more real. It looks like what they're going to try to do is, right now, all handguns in Canada are classified as restricted. The AR-15 and most of the AR-15 variants are classified restricted. It's looking like the government is going to take all of those, for sure, what, what we've been told, they're going to take those and put them into the prohibited category with a gun ban on them. Now, that's further going to whittle down the field of gun owners. So, essentially, they're going to make it gun control by attrition. So what will happen is, since these weapons will be classified as prohib and banned, they won't be able to import parts for them, for starters. And what will happen at the retail level is, once they're banned, they can't be sold. So you're going to end up with firearms dealers, retailers, sitting on tens of thousands, if not a hundred thousand dollars worth of inventory that they're going to have to send out to the police to be destroyed. They don't get reimbursement. They don't get insurance. They're just simply gone. And they're out of that they're out of pocket on that money. Because these are weapons they bought for the shooting sports. For sport shooters, for hunters you know, for trappers. Trappers are allowed to use pistols. That's right. Trappers are allowed to have pistols. But, uh, you know, these, these, these stores are going to go bankrupt. And what, what, what's the other fallout from this happening? Stores go bankrupt. Well, then the gunsmiths are going to go bankrupt too because a large portion of their income is going to be generated from, you guessed it, people with restricted weapons, IPSC shooters, three gun, 
you name it, any competition shooter, those firearms, every year they go into the shop for an overhaul because the owners want to be able to make sure they get peak performance for their competitions. They're not going to try to maintain them themselves and give them their yearly overhaul. Like, they may be able to actually swap out parts. They may know what they're doing, but they're not gunsmiths. Sometimes you may need to grind a couple of millimeters off of a part because it was sent manufactured and whatever, someone went wrong. And you have to modify that part to actually work. Or you're, try you're trying to get the best performance out of your firearm possible, so you're swapping out aftermarket parts, but it's very sensitive equipment, it's very sensitive parts, and you don't want to break it, so, you know, you're sending it off to the gunsmith, who's licensed to do the work, who's insured against any oops, so you're not out of hundreds of dollars for accidentally screwing up your gun. Which is, you know, which is what happens the majority of the time. People want to put the aftermarket goodies on their firearms so that they operate at peak performance. You know, just simple little things like trigger groups. Icky. Anyways. What's going to happen there is those gunsmiths are going to go out of business. Because the restricted weapons, restricted weapons owners are a large part of their business. Handguns require a lot more maintenance than rifles do. So, gunsmiths do a lot of business with handgun owners. So, gunsmiths will go out of, range, out of business. What will happen with the shooting ranges is, and gun clubs is they'll go out of business too. Because most gun clubs, most shooting ranges... Their members who pay their membership dues, you know, most of the membership, the you know, the, the money that keeps those clubs working and operating, that comes from members who, and most of those members are restricted weapons owners. So, as the restricted weapons owners sort of wane away, then they're, because they can't get parts or they can't, and they, or they can't get replacements for their pistols, and they're going to say, "Well, why should I have a gun, a gun range membership anymore? I can't go shoot my pistols. I can't do my competition shooting." So they give up their range memberships, and when those guys go, that's a large portion of the memberships gone. So the ranges will fail. Now there's other, and they'll go bankrupt. There's other fallout from that. Most of the police forces in Canada use private ranges. They don't have their own ranges to practice at or to do their qualifications. In southern Ontario, the range where I go is where most of the law enforcement agencies for southern Ontario go to. If that place goes under, then the cops are SOL for a range. And we're talking police forces from Niagara Falls all the way to Toronto. And some of the ones that are up to the western edge of the province, southwestern pro end of the province, too. So, 50, 000, estimated up to 50,000 people will be out of work by this. Now, if, and the that all pisses me off. Plus, what what uh, what else pisses me off is we have the government sitting there every day vilifying and demonizing licensed gun owners, acting like we're the ones that are out there shooting up the streets of Toronto, trying to make like we're the ones that are giving the guns to the criminals when they know it's not true. They know full well it's not true. I'm sick and tired of it. And I don't want to deal with it. And I'm tired of hearing about it every day in the media. However, we got a government that has bought and paid for the media. Where else can you get, you know, the government here has 
set up a $600 million uh, media bailout fund that they're... And this bailout money is only available to trusted media sources and not fake news sources. So, in other words, any news agency that wants to get a cut of the pie has to... uh, start towing the government line. So, but every day, the government, either Ralph Goodall or Bill Blair, get out there and they start saying, well, you know, firearms owners are responsible for this, that, and the other thing. You know, we had Bill Blair try getting up this week and making the statement, oh, well, the AR-15 was meant for the efficient killing of human beings. That's its sole purpose. No, it wasn't. For start, I'll give you a little history lesson on the AR-15. AR stands for Armalite Rifle. 15 stands for the patent number. Invented in 1954. You know what the inventor based his weapon on? Semi-automatic hunting rifles. Yeah, he was trying to cash in on it and get a, and get a military contract. And he did it by thinking, how can I design a weapon that's quick and easy to manufacture, low cost, you know, <clears throat> decently reliable, and then pass that off to the military for uh, testing, so I can get a contract to supply the U.S. government. Well, it didn't work. They took one look at the. He didn't even get the hand in anything other than his preliminary work. He never got past the first stage. They looked at it on the paper and they said, uh, "Yeah, no thanks. We're not looking for a jumped-up hunting rifle." That's what it was. It was designed around semi-automatic hunting rifles of the time. The same principles are still there. And everybody says, but it looks so dangerous. Well, it's designed for ergonomics, comfort. When you're, you know, they wanted to lighten the weight of the weapon. And to be quite honest, you know, plastic... The polymer body casings on an AR-15 last a lot longer than wood. And it's lighter. And you're not cutting down a fucking tree. You know, when you're making a rifle stock, you're when you're making a four stock on a rifle out of wood, you're starting with pretty much a four by four. And then you're cutting it down to nothing. Same with the buttstock. You're starting with a like a chunk of wood like that by that, and most of it ends up on the ground as shavings from a milling machine. They use polymers. All they have to do is injection molding. It's done. Half of it's not on the floor is shavings and wood chips. But... That, that's just your le- that's just your little history lesson. So the AR-15 was never ever actually a serious contention because when they got the AR-15 designs, and they looked at them, and they said, "No, this isn't going to cut the mustard. It won't stand the tolerances and the stresses required of a military rifle." If you don't believe me, get an AR-15, throw it in the mud, and then try to shoot it. See what happens. It's not like the M16. It looks like the M16 because he took his... You you can make anything look like an M16. Sorry. Got some... Ugh. You can, you can make any rifle look like an M16. All you need is the appropriate body casings. But the looks aren't... The fun, looks don't affect the functionality. The AR-15 is no more deadly than any hunting rifle out there. And in Canada, to boot, it doesn't matter if it's an AR-15. It doesn't matter if it's a Browning semi-auto. It doesn't matter if it's a Remington or whatever. Magazine capacity in Canada for hunting rifles, for any rifle, is five rounds means you're allowed to carry five rounds. That's it. 
You have five rounds in that magazine. That's all you're allowed to have. If you put five rounds in the mag and one in the chamber, and you get caught with that, for that extra bullet, is it really worth the jail time? No. It's not. And people don't do that. At least smart people don't. Besides the fact it screws up your magazine when you do that. Okay, so, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm just sick and tired of the government vilifying the licensed gun owners. And they're pushing our backs to the wall. They're trying to kill our sport. For no other reason other than they want a virtue signal so that they can be seen as doing something about gun crime. When the reality is, it does nothing about gun crime. Bill C-71 doesn't do a thing. It doesn't mention crime. It doesn't mention organized crime. It doesn't mention gangs. At all. It doesn't mention any anything other than licensed gun owners. We're the ones it mentions. Not the crooks. Why? Because we're the easy pickings. We're the ones the government knows has guns that... They can come through and confiscate and say, look what we took off the streets. Yeah, this is dangerous. Go take a look at the crap they collected in the latest buyback program in Toronto. Probably 90% of what was handed in would be considered antique firearms. Stuff that's all old and rusted, been sitting in the attic because Grandpa had it up there. So the city of Toronto just paid out millions of dollars for garbage. Yeah, I guarantee you not one gangbanger handed in his piece. You know why? Because everybody who hands in that gun has got to sign off that they handed in the gun and the gun is test fired to see if it was used in a crime. You really think you're going to get somebody to friggin' incriminate themselves, John Tory? Are you fucking stupid? You must be. This is, all that ever comes out of your mouth is stupidity. Yeah, I'm tired of Bill Blair. I'm tired of Ralph Goodall. I'm tired of Trudeau. And I'm tired of John Tory every day on TV trying to vilify the law abiding, legal, licensed gun owners to try to make us out to be the criminals. Whether they're claiming the straw purchase angle, which has been debunked, or they're trying to push their. 50% of all guns used in crime stat, which again has at least six times that I know of been debunked through access to information requests. But yet they all try to still use it. Mark Saunders tried using it again last week. I'm sick and tired of being made out to be a criminal. So I'm going to ask one very small favor. If you don't know anything about the gun laws of this country, look them up. Go to the RCMP website. It'll tell you what you need to know. You know, formulate an educated opinion. Most people out there don't know shit from Shinola about gun laws in this country. And as a result... That's how our politicians get away with what they say. Because people can't hold them to task for what they say. Because they don't know any better. Now, I've had a few of my friends out there in Facebook ask me if I, I could take you to the range. Well, now that my knee is on the mend and I'm feeling a lot better, the answer is yes. I would be more than happy to take people to the range if, you've, if you want to get a... Get an idea of what it's like, because I know that the image that mainstream media is out there painting us as, as a bunch of dumb, drunk, bubba rednecks. Well, most times when I go to the range, folks, I'd have to say at least 30% of the people at the range would be considered people who are visible minorities or women. I've actually seen quite a few women at the ranges lately, in the last couple of years. So, you know, to my friends who've asked me, Send me a messenger message or PM on Facebook. Don't just leave a little comment. Actually send me a message 
we'll chat and discuss it, work out the details, and uh, we'll set something up. Uh, just so you know, though, there's going to be a fee associated with the range. It's not me absorbing the costs by myself. Can't afford to do that. You want to find? You want to find out what it's all about? I have no problem taking you. Um, there's a. I, I could go. I could make this easily a two-hour spiel. I will be making other videos like this and giving more information about you know Canadian Canadian firearms laws and what my role as a gun owner is and what I'm responsible for so you know I hope that you know people out there if you have I'm going to ask something if, if for those of you out there who have friends and relatives who are involved in the firearms sports, shooting sports. Now, if you support these people, please contact your MPP, or not your MPP, but your your uh, federal member of parliament. And tell them, you know, hey, my mom, my dad, my uncle, my aunt, my brother, my best friend, whoever it is, they're not the source of the problem. Leave them alone. I do not support this action by the government to target licensed law-abiding gun owners. There's 2.2 million of us. And if there's 2.2 million of us, that means folks out there, your friend, you could be friends with a gun owner and not know it. And if you are, you know, hey, show them some support. And, you know, for those of you who, who do come out to the range with me, if you enjoy it, you might want to consider getting your gun license. It's, it's fun being out of the range. I mean, it's not a, it's not a drunky, drunky McFuck clown experience. You know, it's controlled, it's safe, but it's fun. Um, yeah, I know, I know I'm asking a lot asking people to contact their MP and say, hey, look, back the fuck off. Leave, leave the licensed gun owners alone and actually do something about criminals. But until the general public does that, they're just going to keep coming after us. That's the sad truth of it. So, and you got to ask yourself, knowing that these people, the gun, licensed gun owners, are vetted through CPIC every day, why wouldn't you want them to have firearms? I mean, every day I get I get run through CPIC, the Canadian Police Information Center's database, to see if I've had any dealings with law enforcement. Every day. So does every other licensed gun owner, whether they're a non-restricted or a restricted or a prohib owner. It doesn't matter. They all get run through CPIC. That's why we say we are the most heavily vetted group in the country. Police officers aren't subjected to that every day. Murderers and rapists and child molesters out on parole are not subjected to that every day. Only the gun owners are. And like I said, this government is doing nothing but virtue signaling to the general public because they want to be seen as, hey, look at what we're doing. We're taking care of the gun problem. And the fact is, everything they're not one thing that they're doing is aimed at illegal guns. Not one thing they're doing is aimed at the gangsters running around Toronto shooting up the streets. Not one thing that they're proposing would have stopped the Danforth shooting. Because, and I'll say this right now, the Danforth shooter was not a licensed gun owner. He obtained his firearm illegally from his gangster brother who was into drug dealing and gun running. Not to mention the firearm in question was illegal in Canada and was smuggled into the country. And that extended, the extended mags that he had, the high capacity magazines, were also prohibited in Canada. So there's no way he could legally have purchased those. The government for weeks after that 
was scrambling trying to have put out this narrative that the gun was stolen from a gun shop in Calgary. Even when they were presented with the facts that the gun itself that was recovered was a prohib, a prohibited firearm, and the magazines used were prohibited devices, they still tried running with that narrative. So, you know, what were the bad guys? So I know I'm asking a lot when I ask people to contact your member of parliament and say, hey, back off the licensed gun owners and actually go after the criminals. But I don't think I'm asking a lot. Because after all, one of the first things this government did do when they started dealing with firearms laws, before they even came up with Bill C-71, was to tell judges to stop issuing the mandatory minimums for gun crimes. Was to change the law regarding incarceration times, so that to change these minimum times. So that instead of uh, getting five years for possession of illegal possession of a firearm, now somebody only gets like 13 months. You know, if you steal a firearm in Canada, you could get up to a light. You you could get a life sentence for that for the theft of a firearm. How many times do we hear firearms are stolen, but these people aren't get aren't charged with it? They're just charged with simple possession. That way, they don't have to issue that life sentence. They get them to plead away to the possession. They plead that life sentence down to a simple possession charge. That shit's got to stop. And until they stop doing that and they start actually enforcing the laws that are on the books. Right now, if you stole a firearm, I'm going to lay this on the line for you. There's a couple of charges that are under the Firearms Act that uh, can net you life sentences. All right? That's like 20-year sentences. And altogether, if you were to steal a firearm for the purposes of and, and ammunition and commit a crime with the firearm, like commit murder or shoot somebody or jack a store up or something, you could get as much as 88 years in prison if you were given the maximum on all of them. Or if you were given the mandatory sentences on all of them. So, but that's all stuff that Trudeau wants to get rid of. He wants to get rid of those mandatories because that's not fair to the criminal. No, it's not fair to society. That's that's the shit that was keeping, you know, people bitch about Harper, but, you know, that's the stuff that was keeping these animals in check. So, you know, if you support people's rights to own firearms legally and lawfully, please contact your MP. Tell them that you don't agree with Bill C-71. Tell them you don't agree with a gun ban for licensed Firearms owner, because guns are already banned unless you own a license. They're already prohibited. They're already banned from the general population. You have to go through the RCMP. You have to take the Canadian Firearms Safety Course. You have to pass it. There's a written and there's a practical test. You've got to pass them. And I think passing is like 85%. Secondly, you have to send your paperwork and this is just to get your non-restricted license, the one that I have. You have to send your paperwork into the RCMP. You have to provide two references. Two references. Put a photograph on there. Have a guarantor. And you have to list your conjugal partners for the past five years. And, God help you if you're divorced, you have to... Within the last five years, you have to get your ex-wife or ex-husband to sign off. That's how strict things are. And even if you go to the firearms course and you pass the written and the practical, if the instructor doesn't, does not think that you should have a license because he thinks you're fucking sketchy, he won't sign off. If he doesn't sign that piece of paper, you're not getting shit. 
because he still has to approve it. It doesn't matter what your scores are. That firearms instructor, he or she will have to sign your paperwork to say, yes, they approve. They'll take, their, they'll take your money. They'll let you take the class. They'll let you write the test. But if they don't approve you, you're not getting... You, you send that thing in all you like till the cows come home. You will not get a license. Anyways, this has been my uh, firearms owner's rights rant. Um, I may post some more videos regarding Canadian gun laws and firearms owners' rights. So if you do support the right of firearms owners, please think about contacting your MP. You know, any, any little thing you do can help us out right now. Because right now the shooting sports are fun and they're quite enjoyable and they're, res they're handled responsibly and there's no need for it to die out by government hand. All right, I'm going to say thank you to everybody for listening. And again, guys that have asked me to take you to the range, get in contact with me, messenger message me, or PM me on Facebook. But don't just leave a one quick comment someplace on my timeline, so I'll probably miss it. All right? So I've noticed Facebook doesn't always give me stuff the same day it happens. I have, some of you guys have posted stuff on my timeline, and it shows up three, four days later. Yeah, guess they don't like people like me. Anyways, everybody, have a good one. Take care. Peace out.